Alrighty, welcome back. We've got a three on three. It is myself, Talisker, and Mac battling once again against our Austrian opponents, Max Capone, the tank, and uh, four legs, four bane. <laughs> uh, and you know what? I, I keep drafting red aggro. Well, I opened a Caves of Chaos Adventure. It's by far the best card in the pack. In fact, this pack is quite poor. I think Max is going to second pick like. City of Traders, Echo of Eons, maybe like a green card if it goes with a pick one green card. And then I don't know what Talisker is going to take. And after that, it gets much weaker. So, all right, well, we'll take Caves of Chaos and go from there. Ah, this pack has some action. There's a Fetch Land. There's a Wasteland. A Grim Monolith. Wheel of Fortune. Archon of Cruelty as well. I could actually take the Archon. Uh, four legs over here, uh, Anton, passed me a pack that has, I think, two pretty strong cards, plus a Marsh Flats, which I, I, I like all those more than Wasteland, but Wheel of Fortune and Case of Chaos Adventure don't even go together all that well, and Archon is, is a really busted card, so I'll just take Archon here. I also don't mind if Max takes Wheel or whatever out of this pack. I think uh, passing the Archon would have been more dangerous, so maybe I'm going to get hooked here and Anton's going to try to take reanimate or sneak cards but you know I'm willing to take that risk and I'll probably follow up the Caves of Chaos Adventure with just a Rabble Master here this is another pretty weak pack we're passing a Jace I guess out of this pack and a Toxic Deluge but I like Rabble and there's two red four drops that could wheel so this seems like a fine pick to me and then here well <laughs> so there's Gorio's Vengeance, but that doesn't work with Archon. There's Memory Lapse is by far the best card in the pack. And then there's like Gix's Command, Glint Sleep Siphon, or Blood Fountain as like mid black cards. I'm just going to take Memory Lapse here, I think. I could maybe, I mean, maybe I go blue-red. Maybe I ditch the Archon. Maybe I end up in some Grixis deck. I don't know. But I just don't want to pass Memory Lapse because the rest of these cards, I think, are a lot weaker. So I'd rather take that and kind of see where things go, try to, you know, read the draft and <laughs> figure out the best place to be, rather than just say, like, well, I guess I'm Red Black Reanimator and taking a Gorio's Vengeance that doesn't do much for me. So this seems like a fine pick, even if my first four cards don't go together quite as easily as I would have hoped. I guess I guess this makes me wish I took Jace over Rabble Master here, but Jace is overrated anyway. And then this pack, huh, this pack doesn't have any good cards. There's a Luminarch Aspirant, which is good, and a Tracker, which is good. So good, two good white and green cards. There's a Thopter Foundry. There's a Sylvan. Eek. I might just take Raugrin Trium. It's a red-blue land. I could easily end up in red-blue. And none of these other cards are very playable for me, so I guess, I guess it's just got to be the Trium. I'm not even passing anything I'm too concerned about. Okay, this pack has Pyrokinesis, which is good. Magda, which is good. I don't think I'm a Basalt Monolith Enjoyer here. I'm looking at just taking this Magda. It's a good two-drop. It fits really nicely into blue-red. I could just end up ditching this Archon, which is fine. If it ends up being just a straight-up hate draft, I'm also not that worried. I haven't gotten past any black. And I think I'd rather have Magda over Pyrokinesis at this point in the draft. Though Pyrokinesis, really nice with Caves of Chaos Adventure. I think I, I want to make sure I've got the ability to attack. Now there's a Restless Vents. I mean, this is my opening pack, which was really weak. Or a Thief of Sanity. Those are two options here. Maybe I just take Restless Vents, because I could still end up Grixis for sure. And I don't mind passing a Thief of Sanity. This pack is also pretty weak. Huh. Wasteland came back. So did Ashen Rider. So I guess Bloodthirsty Adversary, but I think I'm just going to take Wasteland. This looks like the start to a pretty good Wasteland deck, and it's a good colorless card. I'll pass a Coveted Jewel. That, that doesn't bother me too much here. The only thing I know so far is that I'm playing red. Other than that, it's not clear which direction I want to go, though it's pretty easy to imagine splashing a Memory Lapse. But here, yeah, I think I should just take Rampaging Raptor over like a Temple Garden or Blooming Marsh. Those don't help me too much. I don't think I need Scrap Heap Scrounger. All right, we've got an aggressive red start with a couple different outlets. I can either maybe go reanimator or sneak, if the cards would come for that. Even if they came in pack two, I'd be willing to consider it. And I've got memory lapse. Here I could take Agatha's Soul Cauldron as a hate card. I could take Blood Fountain. If I end up playing 
black red blood fountains is, is actually pretty good gix's command is also a playable mm, i think i'll just take gix's command and then now i think i just take sylvan library it's still it's still a good card in the pack i don't i don't think any of these cards are something i care about passing and then here i guess i'll take inferno titan i think over tribal flames yeah if I end up with like a sneak attack in my deck, Inferno Titan is going to be pretty nice for that. So I've got all red cards with a red-blue land, or red-blue-white land even, a red-black land, and then one blue card, one black card, one green card. I guess I'll just take Ranger Captain and pass the two green cards, though. Yeah, this deck could actually Questing Druid. It wouldn't be crazy. And I'll take Pulse over Thassa's Oracle. Last pick, Blooming Marsh? Okay. Well... I don't really know what, what's going on here yet. I've tried not to pass anything too good. It's part of the, taking the Archon and taking the Memory Lapse is just to not pass them. Any pieces of power? <laughs> of course you opened Time Walk and Soul Ring. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Um, well, let's see. So, Senor Four Legs here did pass an Eternal Witness late. Still likely playing blue, but I think I'm going to take Soul Ring. Soul Ring is actually going to be a lot better for my deck. It's not necessarily... I mean, it's Time Walk is still good, but when you don't get a chance to draft around it, and, and they're probably not playing green, and they passed a late Eternal Witness, so they don't have those cards. Soul Ring is also just perfect in this deck. Yeah, I guess I'll take Soul Ring and pass the Time Walk, and then... Uh, at the very least, Mac gets a Mana Vault, so that, that's kind of nice. All right. Mm. Painful. Opening two power is like opening zero power. Uh, oh, and there's a fourth or Lingus. I like that one. I've got a Raugrin Triumph, too. Yeah, I'm going to take fourth or Lingus here. All right, let's take the black and green cards to the sideboard, and I think we're going to try to be some kind of Jeskai-ish deck. But I'm, I'm happy enough to take 4th year Lingus Pass, Lorien Revealed, Cryptic Coat, Trop, yeah. Stuff that's not that good. Also, if I can cut blue cards in this pack, that would be kind of nice because I just passed a Time Walk. So cutting blue can make the Time Walk a little more awkward, though I don't know how likely it will be that I can do all that. All right, now this pack has some good black cards with like Duress and Night's Whisper. There's also a Gemstone Mine. I think I'm going to take Teferi and try to be blue, white, red over Bonehorde Dracosaur and pick up a few, little bit more in the way of fixing. There's like also, I mean, I think Duress gets taken. Spar's Headquarters probably gets taken, but Teferi's just the best card. And there's also Aragorn, which could wheel, and I could be set up for Jeskai. I have to start taking lands a little higher, but I feel like we've got a decent spot here. <laughs> Soaring in time walk, huh? <laughs> uh, funny, funny. All right, now this pack, I don't like passing Tamiyo after passing Time Walk, but I don't think that Forbane is going to be that into Tamiyo necessarily. I'm not going to take the Hell Rider. I'm not going to take Watery Grave. It's basically Spire Bluff Canal versus Elite Spellbinder, and it's got to just be Spire Bluff Canal, I would imagine. I don't really know how much white I want to end up playing, and Spire Bluff is just so perfect for this deck. So I think I'm going to take that and probably just take a Bone Crusher after that. I like Bone Crusher a lot. I don't really care for any of these black cards. I don't really want a double white card. Eagles of the North would be great if it wheeled, but I think I've got to take Bone Crusher first. And then here, well, there's a bunch of white cards, but I kind of want to just take Mana Confluence. It's looking like a pretty good Mana Confluence deck. And then maybe wheel one of the white cards. I don't really care which one. Yeah, that seems fine to me. Okay. My mana is looking a little better here, so I don't mind that. And then now we've got Figure of Destiny versus Dig Through Time versus Virtue of Loyalty, passing two really good black cards. Well, and a Collective Brutality. I guess I'll pass the black stuff to uh, Forbane here, who I think probably tried to hook me with that Archon. And, I mean, it kind of worked in that I took the Archon. I'll probably just take Figure. Figure is just a good little beater, and it doesn't matter what colors I am. Oh, Scholar looks pretty nice here, too. I can go fetch Raugrin Triome. Also, I can just, it helps ramp me on the draw. And I don't really care about passing a Trop too badly. And then Aragorn did wheel, so did Gemstone Mine, but picking up Mana Confluence and Scholar has made me a lot more confident I can cast Aragorn, and Aragorn is really nice to cast. So let's do that. 
Tamiya's back, but you know what? I think I'm going to take the Watery Grave. I think that's a more effective hate draft. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like uh, I feel like Forbidden was not drafting green, so maybe you can splash Tamiya. It will still be good, but I think there's so much more likely that they're like drafting black and then took the time walk because you have to, and then the Watery Grave would have really helped them out. So I like doing that. The time walk soul ring thing is just. I don't know. It's really close. They're they're both really really good. I think at the stage in the draft that we were at, it was better to pass the soul ring, but you know, or sorry, better to pass the time walk. But it's a close one, and I obviously am not thrilled about it. Let's just open pack three. I can just open a lotus and no power, other power, so I don't have to worry about all that. <laughs> oh, good. Eagles of the North came back, and I think especially getting a Rao Grin Triumph, I'm definitely into that. All right over passing a baleful strix and an unmarked grave i think that's all right and then leyline binding yeah i could see myself running leyline binding i have a watery grave it's already three mana if you're just straight up just guy and then now i'll just take a collective brutality and I guess regrowth, because that's also a card that goes with Time Walk. But again, it doesn't seem like he's taking those cards, which does make Time Walk a lot less good. I think I think that is true. All right. Last pick, Renin 6. And no power, but Mana Leak is just fantastic. So I'll take Mana Leak here. Pass a Mystical Tutor and a Jace to the Time Walk guy. Well, other direction. And there's some good Reanimate stuff. There's a Xander's Lounge, Mind Collapse, Brazen Bar. Yeah, there's a bunch of good cards in this pack, but... I am just taking Mana Leak, and really I would love to pick up some lands in these packs. If I can get a little bit more fixing, that would be awesome. Oh, there's a Sneak and a Gut. So Sneak would put Archon back on the table, but I don't have any tutors or card draw. So I think I'm just going to take Gut, pass the Spell Seeker. Gut just looks really good in this deck. There's also Urza Saga, and I do have Soul Ring. What's it better to... What is Max up to? Should I pass this Urza Saga, or should I just take it? Because Urza Saga is also a pretty messed up card. But Gut seems like it's a lot better for this deck. I'm just going to take the Gut and get in there. Hope to draw Soul Ring. <laughs> turn 1 figure, turn 2 Soul Ring, Gut, attack, sack the Soul Ring. Just get in there for... For five, next turn attack, sack the figure. Who knows? There's Flash. But I'm just going to take Fiery Confluence and really just like pray to, to, to Garfield here that I can get this Plateau back. It would be so good. But Fiery Confluence is such a messed up card. I've got to just take it. Take out the Leyline Binding for now, for now. We'll see, we'll see about that one. So Mr. Timewalk passed Underworld Breach, which I can't really take. There's also Get Lost. There's also World Spine to go with Flash. Ugh. Third Path Iconoclast looks decent in this deck, but not amazing. No More Lies could be pretty good. What am I supposed to take? Am I supposed to just hate Breach or Worm or something? I'm scared of passing Flash Worm, but why would you take the Flash? I mean, I didn't really consider taking the Flash there either. I think given where I'm at, I should just take No More Lies, but I don't know. That's really tough. All right. Luris I like, but this isn't really a Luris deck. I probably just should just take the red-white land and then uh, just try to go go that direction. And then this pack has Grief and Persist and Doomsday. I passed a late Oracle. There's also a Benevolent Bodyguard, but I might want Dockside Extortionist over that. Mm, Starnheim Unleashed is a card I could also put in my deck. I don't think I'm at a point where I can put the Territorial Kavu. My fixing is not that good. There's also Scrapwork Mutt as just like a two drop, but Dockside is pretty nice with uh, Gut as well. I think I'll just go Dockside, and I think that's the higher upside play. Xander's Lounge came back. So did all the Reanimates. So did Palantir and Mind Collapse and Woodfall Primus. Do you want a tapped red blue land that also makes Leyline Binding a little cheaper? Yeah, I think so. Because this has been a weird draft. I So Spellseeker got passed. Okay, I kind of like that. Because, look, if if Forbane is passing Spellseeker to me, it means that it's not doing the... Time Walk is not taking up that part of his deck. I think that's huge. And now there's Sneak, which I could just take. 
sneak in Inferno Titan. I could put in this Archon, but again, I don't have that much in the way of card draw. I kind of want to just take Teferi. I have de decent enough mana, and Teferi is, I think, a pretty strong follow-up. I could take this Inferno Titan out. Okay, now Indotha Triumph. If I take Indotha Triumph, I could try to be Domain, but I, the only Domain card I have is the Leyline Binding, which is already good enough. I think Grim Lava Mancer is going to be fine here. It also, it makes Gut better to have like a cheap, a cheap creature. And I think a tapped white, black, green land is not really what I'm looking for. I guess Plateau is the next pack, I feel like. We'll see. Yeah, no Plateau for me. I guess I'll just take the World Spine. I mean, would I play Third Path Iconoclast? I feel like I don't have enough actual spells. No. And I'll pass a bunch of green cards, sure. I'll take the World Spine. I think I'll take Malcolm, because I, I would actually play Malcolm in this deck. And... Don't think Stomping Ground is going to be what I want. Okay, Territorial Kavu came back, but again, can't really run it, so I'll take Scrapwork Mutt, which I definitely could run. And it's good with Grim Lava Mancer, and it's good with Gut. And currently this is 17 land plus Eagles of the North and Soaring, but Wasteland is kind of also a spell, so that's not bad. Oh, Mind Collapse, I will take that, yeah. And sure, I'll take a last pick, Seething Song. Well, I'm not going to play Seething Song, I don't think. I guess maybe if I sided Inferno Titan, I would. Last pick, Neshoba Brawler. It was open. It was open. All right, let's see what my teammates did, because this, this is a tough one. All right, well, didn't have a, an excess of playables. Really, the only red cards in the sideboard are Seething Song and Inferno Titan, and there's no white or blue cards in the sideboard at all. Leads to a 16 land deck with Eagles as a 17th and Soaring is kind of like an 18th. And then uh, just a good curve with Mana Leak, Memory Lapse, and No More Lies as counters. A bunch of good red creatures, a fourth Eorlingus, a couple Teferis, and I we'll hope this is good enough. I, I don't love it. I do not love it. But I think I ended up okay mana-wise. And then taking a look, Mac is on... Mardu, he ended up swapping in Luris for Trespasser because he couldn't companion it, but with like Dungeoneer, Fury, Flame Tongue, a bunch of removal, Duress, Inquisition, Concealing Curtains, had a basically failed reanimator deck. He has like Entomb, Shallow Grave, Unmarked Grave in a sideboard, so an okay deck. And then Talisker's on Emrakul, Sneak, Primus, Triplets, Flash, and then Aggro cards. I uh, ended up cutting the GTA and the Grist, but... Under Mountain Adventure, Axe and Ferox, Under Uvalmold Oddity, some ramp cards. So pretty classic Talisker deck. I think these decks are just okay. I think this is going to be a close draft, and uh, let's get to it. All right. On the play against the tank, any soul rings? No, but this hand's still pretty good. I think... Honestly, I think I just play turn one, Mana Confluence, Grim Lava Mancer, and get in there. Turn two, I have... Mana Leak and No More Lies Up, and then turn three I play Raugrin Triumph, do that again. And that's going to be my plan. You get one turn to resolve something before the counter wall starts. And if I go counter counter into Caves of Chaos Adventure, I think that's going to work out pretty nicely. Hmm, Mountain makes me a little sad that I played Grim here, but Soaring makes me very happy that I drew it. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Well, definitely not trying to save it from a Lava Dart. I will play Soul Ring now. Pass the turn. Mana Leak. Whatever gets played this turn. And then slam Caves of Chaos Adventure. That sounds like a plan. Oh, Thalia? Yeah. Mana Leaking that. It's not even that Thalia is that bad for me, honestly. It's that uh, I don't want anything in play when I play my initiative card. Okay, and Caves of Chaos Adventure. Well, let's do it. Playing against Red White. Don't mind the matchup against Red White too much. This Dockside Extortionist is not looking fantastic here. Hmm, is there any chance that I want to play Mountain? No, I'm going to play Raugrin Triumph. I don't think I'm that likely to want to cycle Raugrin Triumph. And I think getting a land into play is good. Next turn. Well, we'll see what uh, the tank does. Because I'm probably just going to put two plus one plus one counters on Caves of Chaos Adventure and just win from there. That's going to be my plan here. But 
we'll see what their turn three play is. If that's killing Kays of Cast Adventures. No, very much not. It's a coalition relic. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going into the forge then. Putting two counters there. And this card, Kays of Cast Adventures, just ends the game so quickly. Because now I get to slam and then exile my top card. It's a Rampaging Raptor. Sure. I'll play that. Rampaging a Raptor. And I still have no more lies up, which is pretty nice. And lies and I can counter whatever comes next. Collision Relic and your Lava Dart Thalia deck. Okay, okay. You're cooking. That's fine. I mean, they're super dead, I would imagine, here. Uh, <laughs> trap next turn, plus I already have just lethal without trap on the board. Going to have to have a pretty good one, especially since it has to get through a, a counter spell here. Do have six mana if you've got a land drop, though. That I mean, that's a lot of land. You could, you could try to get something going. I could cast Balance and I couldn't counter it. But I don't even know that Balance would be that much of a disaster for me since I could still rebuild with Extortionist and Mutt and then uh, I would still have the initiative. All right, Oof. up a game here. Okay, <clears throat> playing against Red White. That kind of makes me want Seething Song Inferno Titan. I think Lava Dart's just going to be good against me, yeah. I mean, it's got Grim, Figure, Malcolm, Magda. Yeah, there's no way. I can't really sideboard to make that not the case. I guess I could cut, like, Grim Lava Mancer because it's, like, maybe one of the more low-impact ones. Maybe I cut Dockside as well. And I put in Seething Song and Titan. All right. Let's try that here. Could see not cutting Grim. We'll have to get a little bit more info here. But I have a bunch of burns, so I'm not that worried. Uh, yeah, this hand seems fine. Xander's Lounge means that the uh, Leyline Binding is going to be relatively cheap, especially if I draw a white source. Okay, Mana Vault's a little dangerous because I'm not going to be able to memory lapse what comes out of it on turn two here. But <clears throat> if I draw planes, I could Leyline Binding on turn two. And even if I don't, hopefully this isn't like... Hope, maybe it's something I can take one hit from. And then I do have Binding lined up for turn three off Mana Confluence with turn two Malcolm plus... Oh, no plays. Okay, well, I'm going to be happy to just go Island Go here. Leave up uh, Malcolm and Memory Lapse and pass the turn. Okay, pass... Yeah, i got nothing to do. I've got a flash creature and a memory lapse. Memory lapse against some, someone who's stuck on lands and potentially using mana vault is, is dirty. You, you can definitely get them pretty good there. All right, I'll play Malcolm here. If I get a lava darted, then so be it. It looks like that might be the case, yeah. Draw, all right. Oh, I guess I actually, sh yeah. maybe I should have played Mana Confluence so I could cast Leyline Binding, but I kind of want to use Memory Lapse here. I can't cast No More Lies either. A Robber of the Rich. Um, let's Memory Lapse that, because then I can go Scrapwork Mutt. Oh, that's nice. Um, and I'm going to play the Mutt. And I actually don't think I discard here. No. It's kind of a pain because I would have so much rather had a Plains than a Mana Confluence. But I just don't think I should discard my six land and only white source when my hand is a six drop and a bunch of white cards. So <laughs> it doesn't really seem like it. And now I don't care about Robber of the Rich. You can play it or not play it. I'm just going to block if you attack. Okay, and then now I'll leave the counters down for a second here. Okay, Aragorn's nice. So let's cast this. Inferno Titan comes down, eats Robber of the Rich, and does one to my opponent. Hit for two with the Mutt. And then now if I draw white or blue... Mm, yeah, white or blue mana, and I can cast No More Lies. Uh, um, Plateau is unfortunate, because that means that's something that can maybe deal with Inferno Titan. Oh, no, that's just Bonehorde Dracosaur. All right, well, 
that's that's just probably game. I mean, I'm gonna ley line binding it. Not a whole lot you can do to answer that is my guess for one white mana. Could have a way to kill the Inferno Titan, but <clears throat> I don't know how likely that is. And then because I can't cast No More Lies this turn anyway, I'm just gonna slam the Rabble Master and get in there for nine, 11, 12 damage. It's a pretty good amount of damage. Okay, Leyland Binding hits. Bonehorde Dracosaur is out of here. Rabble Master. Send in the crew here. Got to have Path. Oh, there's Bolt. Okay, well, Bolt <clears throat> would stop Rabble Master, does not stop Inferno Titan. And then now I get to Nug for three on top of everything else. Puts Tank down to six, down to five. And <clears throat> I don't think the Aragorn's going to be necessary here. No, it's possible you could have a Wrath or something. Comet. <laughs> this better be a sick Comet. All right, <laughs> let's go. Roll those dice. I mean, what are you going to do? All right. Yeah, that's already not enough. It, it's, it hit either the return a creature or deal five. <laughs> and neither of those will do the trick because Inferno Titan will get the job done. And uh, that makes me one and O. Oh. You do, in fact, love to see it. Oh, he gets to Lava Dart. Never mind. Never mind. It's not, it's not just over. I mean, I think I'm doing pretty good, but... No, though, that hitting hitting the lava, the lava dart does make that actually work out. So let's go Aragorn. And I guess I'll tap it this way because I'm drawing a card. Becoming the Monarch. And I guess I'm going to attack Comet down to one. No, I'm going to attack the tank because, look, this puts the tank down to two, basically, because of uh, the Mana Vault. And so now the now the, the the comet really has to pop off for this not to be game over. All right, let's see. Roll six sided die. Got two squirrels, but that's it. We didn't we didn't plus. So now I just take the hit and then I attack back and and that should be lethal unless you have a way to kill Aragorn. Uh, okay. Can't kill Aragorn now. Yeah. All right, that should now be game. Oh, mind collapse would have also done the trick, but. Given that I'm the Monarch, I just get to attack with these two. And then nothing can block, and boom. Whew. All right, there we go. We got round one. All righty. Time for round two, playing against Four Legs, who has the time walk, and ended up drafting blue-green, but I think switched into it. I unfortunately have to mulligan that hand. This hand, I'm going to keep this. I think I just put no more lies back, and I hope to curve into gut here. Soul Ring would be an amazing draw. And I actually wouldn't mind my opponent having something to, for me to extort. If I get to use it, get a little Dockside extortionist value out of this, it would be pretty good. All right. I guess it gets to see what's coming. He doesn't know is it's, it's I'm going to go turn one figure, turn two soul ring gut. That's my plan. That is my plan. Um, I think I'd rather play the turn one figure. And then turn two, I can pump it and play Xander's Lounge, guaranteeing the turn three gut. Especially since I don't really want to play a dockside into zero uh, artifacts or enchantments. That doesn't really seem too exciting. Crack Delta for Trop. What do you got here? Lotus Cobra. Okay. Uh, I'll attack. Yeah, just take one. That's fine. I'm going to play a Xander's Lounge past the turn because I'm just going to cycle Eagles of the North and then just play Gut and Sack the, the figure when I attack. That is going to be my plan. I don't really have a better one. I'm not liking this position. I just feel like I'm on the draw against a turn two Cobra undisrupted. Presumably my opponent can play something good here. Well, cycling Timeless Dragon is not actually that bad. Get like a Spara's Headquarters here. No, just a basic planes. Okay, so maybe we've got a play off this Cobra into Time Walk. 
It's a good card. It's a good card. All right. Now let's see what the the turn four play is here. You get to go land, play a five drop when I'm, I'm on two lands. Yeah, that's time walk with Cobra on the play is nice. Now, if only I can get my soul ring. Though we're actually getting to the point where soul ring is not even that impressive here. No attacks, no land play. Okay, that's not too bad at all. Go get a basic planes. I'm just going to play gut here. I don't really have a better play. Yeah, if you, I have a bunch of the counters. If you've got a counter, you got a counter, so be it. And then I'm going to attack with figure and sacrifice it <laughs> and get a 4 1 that you cannot block. And if you counter this, oh, days. All right. Mm. Yeah, I will. I will. Send. I'm trading one for two, but I think that's worth it. So Day's returning a land, so you can replay it with Cobra and get a mana. It's a heads-up play. My plan is to go Aragorn into fourth Erlingus. That is going to be that is going to be my play here. But we'll we'll see how this turns out. Oh, Samwise to block. Okay. I guess the ring bear is the cobra now. All right. Interesting. That was a lot more action on my turn than I kind of expected. We'll see what the the play is here off of this land drop. Cuz there is going to be land drop plus cobra. Days was kind of a nice counter spell there. Got to pick up a land for value. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And Tamio. Okay. You can get back Time Walk, but you can't cast it this turn. Okay. All right. Revealed. And let's see. What got named? Oh, Soaring is nice. Oh, Soaring was really nice. Named Dig Through Time and Mist, I think. All right. So now. I get to go Soul Ring into fourth the Orlingus for three. And I'm not gonna worry about the uh, I'm not gonna worry about getting the monarch, because I'm just gonna attack Tamio for six here. Hopefully I don't get force of weld. That would obviously be brutal. But taking out Tamio seems like a pretty good good use of my turn. I get a basically six six worth of stats and get to kill Tamio. Oh, he had the force of will. Wait, pitching force of negation? Huh. He guess I guess he wanted force of will in the graveyard. Wow. Force of will is so sick there. Okay. Hmm. Alright, well. This deck's pretty gross. Luckily Mac did beat for being around one here. So now you can get back time walk and time walk, but it doesn't do that much. Well, I really just need to not to have force. We'll head force and force, huh? Okay, here goes a lush portico. Um, adding a blue, I'm sure. And then if you scry or a green, I guess, sure. If you scry to the top, it's funny. You can actually uh, plus Tamio and hit. And they know my last two cards in hand here. Okay, they bend an island. We have Jace, all that stuff. All right, we got Time Walk back with Tamio. Kind of as expected. Time Walk. Sakura Tribelder is the last card. Okay. Hit for two, take the time walk turn. No reason to crack Elder, because with a Lotus Cobra in play, it's the same amount of mana either way. So now, getting back time walk, you lose Tamio, so probably not going to do that. On my turn, I'm just playing Aragorn and uh, Dockside Extortionist, I guess. I'll just play them both. Not quite get back Primeval Titan. All right, we're plussing again, and hopefully missing. 
Okay, missed again. Displacer Kitten. Wow. Yeah, I got a lot going on here. Named Dig Through Time again and missed. Can't use Tamiyo, but we'll be able to use it next turn. Hopefully the card for Bane Drew wasn't too good. Mm. I don't like it. Casting a spell is, is bad news for me. Oh, just putting a Timeless Dragon into play. I guess that's a good... Yeah, that's a, a good fallback. All right, well, let's take the turn. Mind Collapse would be a pretty nice draw. Aragorn. And I'll play a Dockside, even though it doesn't, it doesn't get anything. And I think I'm just going to play my Raugrin Triome and... I'm just having to hope to draw something great here. I don't. I think at that force will pretty much broke me. Like getting forced there was just way too much for me. Let's see what you got. I get to draw a card end of turn, and a Malcolm alluring scoundrel. Man. Can attack with the dragon, get back time walk, become the monarch, attack again. But the problem is if I don't play Aragorn, I have no no hope of winning. I guess I could have not played Dockside. Oh no, I couldn't have even done that because I had to use the Soul Ring. So Alright. Yep, time walk. Can't stop that. So you become the monarch. Okay, land. And then hit for four, go to seven, become the monarch, untap, draw, Contamio again, but hasn't hit yet. Getting close to where Tamio kind of has to hit <laughs> because you have no cards in deck. Timeless Dragon is going to fly over for four here. All right, I'll go to seven. You become the monarch Reno here. All right, take your turn. Um, I'm looking here. What are we hoping for? What is this? Oh, is this an, this is still an end of turn. Yikes. <laughs> I, I already couldn't beat anything. Casting an actual spell end of turn makes me even less likely to do so. Unexpectedly absent. All right, all right. That's enough for me. Let's go to game two. All right, so siding. I don't really have much. I don't think I really want any of this stuff. I think think we're just good to go here. <laughs> I think that's where we're at. All right, let's see. We are on the play this game. Any soul rings? No. But definitely going to keep this on the play. I'm going to go turn one grim. Yeah, I want to play turn one Grim, turn two cycle eagles for Raugrin Triumph and play it. And then if I draw a land on turn three, then I have gut attack with Grim, turn it into a 4-1, and then have mana leak up after that, or maybe Raptor. And I have a mind collapse as well. So pretty solid keep. Do need to draw a third land though. Alright. Spire Bluff into Grim Lava Mand. Pass the turn. And I don't think. Yeah, I don't really think there's any reason to cycle on turn one. I guess I could go turn one cycle, turn two land, have mana leak up, but I need the Grim in play anyway. And getting Raugrin Trium will make my life easier for future turns. So, okay, hopefully no plays. All right, plain cycle this. Teferi is at least a good card. So if I draw a land, then I got something to do here. All right, send with Grim. Okay, need a land. Land number three, por favor. Let's see. That was not a land. I guess I will play Magda. I don't really have a have a choice here. Whoa, Magda got Force of Wilt. Okay. I guess so. All right. Well, I guess drawing a land wouldn't have been 
that amazing anyway because whatever I played was getting Force of Will. So if Magda gets Force of Will and then I draw a land and can play Gut or Teferi afterwards, I think that works out pretty nicely. Going to get a Plains here. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're playing a Lush Portico. Uh, that's what they got, actually. So no Plains, no Plains for you. I guess you didn't have a play. Mm. Time walk, sure. Okay, can't bring back the dragon at least. Only four cards in hand, no plays this turn. Let's go land. Ugh. Mm. I'm just going to pass here because maybe I'll use Grim. I don't think attacking for one is particularly re relevant. And it disguises the mana leak a little bit. Plus, I don't really want to attack and trade for Samwise anyway. Let's see. Cycle Lorien Revealed. Hmm. Into Aspara's Headquarters. Okay. Into Sakura Tribe Elder. Sure. Not mana leaking that. That doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, I'm just going to allow it. All right. That's a land. And now i got to play Gut because this is a way I could actually start to win the game. Okay, gut. Now I wish I'd used Grim. <laughs> Tack. And sack the Grim. And then next turn, I mean, next turn I have a bunch of good plays here. I mean, having the Mind Collapse is going to be pretty good this game. Obviously, if he just goes Tamiyo, minus three, Time Walk, cast Time Walk, whatever. You know, I, I can lose to all that. <laughs> There's not much I could do about that. But... I've at least set myself up to try to win the game here. And, uh, you know, there's a possibility I can. Six mana, haven't played a land yet either. So a lot of, lot of mana over here. Pretty nice little time walk deck, as it turns out. Though I have a nice Soul Ring deck, and Soul Ring won me both my first... Uh, won, won me both my games in round one, so... At least from that perspective, the Soul Ring worked all right, and Forbidden lost round one, so... So far, it hasn't worked out badly. I, I don't really know the answer there. Like, I would have had a fine Time Walk deck, though a much better Soul Ring deck. Either one is very good in your opponent's hands, I will say. So... And... On six mana here. All right, there goes Tamiyo. Yep, yep, get back Time Walk. Yep. Draw... I'm going to need Tamiyo to miss here for me to have a shot. If I do, then we'll see. All right, Tamiyo plus one. Maybe naming Displacer Kitten. No, they missed with True Name Library. Oh, Library too, wow. Named. Wrath of God and Mist. Okay. What do I have next here? I'm probably going to have to cast Mind Collapse this turn. Sacrificing my Rogue Triumph. Painful. As for what else I do, it's not clear to me. Soul Ring, Soul Ring could actually win me the game. Because if I do Soul Ring, I could play the Raptor and sack the Soul Ring to make another Skeleton, and that's 14 points of damage, assuming I can Mind Collapse a blocker. No plays? What is happening here? No plays. I think I'm going to play Teferi. This will force a play one way or another. And if it's a creature in response, then I can... Oh, subtlety was the play. Okay, well, that's pretty annoying. Mm. I'll put that on the bottom. Yeah, I think I'm gonna mind collapse the subtlety. Not to subtlety was gross there, and then. Attack Tamiyo, attack my opponent. If 
I get, if I get Samwise, do I get Samwise, I guess? I don't know. Uh, no, I don't have anything to sacrifice. Oh, unexpectedly absent. I see. Okay, well, you can get back Time Walk, but then the Tamiyo's dead. Oh, I guess it would have worked out better to attack Tamiyo with both, but I kind of just have to play the win this game. I'm, I'm on two lands in play. My opponent has six lands in play. I'm not really loving where I'm at. So, let's see. What about getting back... I mean, you can get back Time Walk and, cat and flash back the Timeless Dragon, and that's going to be pretty good. But we'll see, we'll see. I, I feel I just feel like this has been a game where I've been too far behind. I mean, I kept a two-lander and didn't draw a third land, and just it put me in a position where I had to make a bunch of, like, medium plays, it feels like. So I am not loving it. All right. Uh, Tamiyo got back Time Walk, gets back. Oh, Wrath, and then Time Walk? Sure. And then... Oh, is this a Prime Time? Yeah. And that'll do it. All right, we're one and one. Well, let's get to the next round. All right, time for round three. It'd be really nice to get this one and finish with the 2-1. Opponents on a Zerda companion deck with Tinker, Balance, Council's Judgment, Mystical Tutor, Zerda, Grim Monolith, and uh, Emery, and Walking Ballista. So certainly some kind of nice stuff going on. But if I can just draw Soul Ring, it'll be all good. Mm -hmm. No Soul Ring, but this is a fine hand. Let's see. I think I go Planes Go. And... Cycle Eagles to get Raugren Triome and then go turn two Scholar and turn three keep up No More Lies. Yeah, that, that sounds like a pretty reasonable sequence of events to me. And then on turn four, I can play one of these things. All right, planes go. Either Aragorn, probably Caves of Chaos Adventure first because it just hits so hard. But then Aragorn after that, and that'll be my plan. If I could draw Soul Ring in the meantime, I wouldn't complain. Cycle, Raugen Trium, draw, land, Scholar, pass the turn. And now even if Scholar dies somehow, then I've got my fourth land, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's hope this isn't too explosive of a, of a hand here. Okay, maybe a talisman or something. Oh, oust on this on the scholar. All right, that's fine. Play that past the turn. Raugren Trium on board, and I really would like to no more lies something decent this turn. That could be pretty nice. Mm. And then I get to go Caves of Chaos Adventure, get a mountain, and then it's kind of like smooth sailing from there. The The cool thing about both Aragorn and Caves of Chaos Adventure is even if my opponent has balance, well, I'm, I'm still the monarch, I'm st I still have the initiative, like these things are still uh, kind of like persistent value, so it will put me in a pretty good spot here. That Force of Will from game one last match is going to haunt me forever. <laughs> uh I'm going to counter this, whatever it is. If it's a talisman, countered. If it's a three mana play, countered. I mean, I guess there's some plays which maybe I wouldn't counter, but there really aren't very many. You could also play nothing if you want, and then I'll have the counter spell later. That's also fine. I don't have any... I don't really have another play, so... I'm not particularly concerned here. Hmm... Okay, Zerda in hand? That I can't counter. But that also means you're not making any plays here. So that works for me. All right, let's slam Caves of Chaos Adventure and hope this is good enough. Well, it's pretty good. 
Okay, let's get a mountain, pass the turn. <clears throat> Can't go off. Can you go off with Zerda? You can go land, monolith. Yeah, I mean, I guess if if Max has the nut draw, if he goes land, cast Grim Monolith, cast Zerda with two floating, untap monolith, go infinite. Jules, chill. Ballista me. I mean, I guess if that's the case, that's the case. What am I going to do? And let's see. You can kill the case of Cast Adventure. I re retain the initiative. We're getting to the point where I might want to leave No More Lies up. Well, it'll depend. If the Caves of Chaos Adventure dies, I'm going to have to tap out again. Or there's nothing to it. If the Caves of Chaos Adventure doesn't, then I can probably attack, maybe see what I play off the Caves of Chaos Adventure, if anything, play Scholar and leave up No More Lies. And then at some point, being able to leave up Mind Collapse. Because this is an instant. You can only play it for free on your turn. But there are places where I would want to kill that. One thing that is annoying about the Zerta combo is... Uh, it does go off through a removal spell if you have enough mana. You go like Zerda, untap Monolith. I try to kill it. You untap Monolith again. So as long as you have extra two mana for per removal spell, you can still get infinite mana off Monolith and whatnot. Okay. There goes land. And walking Ballista, X equals one. Okay. Okay, well, I'm still going to go to the Forge, I think. Because I want to try to get this game over with. Get lost. All right, that I will have to counter. And I think I'm going to oh, almost assuredly get a Mind Collapse the Walking Ballista at this point. I mean just makes it so the Zerda can't kill me, but let's see what I hit off of Caves of Chaos Adventure. All right, I guess I'll play that. Play the Xander's Lounge. Mind Collapse the Ballista, sacking the Xander's Lounge. Though, maybe I should have sacked the Raugrin Trium. It actually, yeah, I actually should have. It's kind of weird, but the reason that to do that is I have a Leyline Binding in my deck, and I don't actually need another white source here. So that is kind of funny, but uh, unlikely to come up too big, but definitely something to keep in mind. So opponent has Zerda in hand, and boom, up a game. Mm. Okay. Uh, as usual, I don't have a sideboard. Maybe I should look into that. <laughs> Dockside, though. Dockside is going to shine here. Do I want Inferno Titan over something? The problem is, even though Grim is kind of dorky, it just, like, it works with gut, and I think that that's enough. I don't think Inferno Titan sounds that good. Okay. Let's see here. On the draw, any soul rings? Any turn two Caves of Chaos Adventurer? I wouldn't mind that. Okay, no, but I have Magda into counter spells. And the Mutt can help me cycle through one of these lands. Yeah. This seems like a totally keepable hand, even though not the most exciting. It's certainly not in a position to mulligan it. Okay. Island go. Let me take that. Ooh. I like Scholar, too. I'm probably going to play Magda still, but Scholar is a, is a pretty nice one. Okay. Talisker is up a game against Red-White. Their Red-White player is, is 0-2 currently, so if we can pin him down to an 0-3, that would be pretty nice. My opponent has the turn to Lion Sash. Uh, okay. Huh. Interesting. Ooh, Dockside's not bad. Let's go with Magda, because the sooner I can trade Magda for a Lion Sash and get a treasure out of the deal, the better it is for me. I actually wouldn't mind if Max played, like, a dorky artifact this turn so my Dockside could, could get full value. My hand ended up being all two drops here. Is this going to be a Ballista to kill my Magda? 
Mm-hmm. Can you do it now? No third land. Interesting. No attack either. Okay. And I drew a Malcolm. Mm. There's no way you're going to let me attack here, right? Or do you really want to keep this Ballista in play? <sighs> yeah, all right. Magda down. Lion Sash is kind of annoying here. I think I'm just going to play a land and say go. Not so much because I want to leave up Memory Lapse. I don't care too much about that. But mostly because I think given the situation, I'd rather just get a Malcolm down. I'll take my take my damage here. Cursed scroll. Okay. Seems like that one's not going to be the easiest to use. And also because I have Dockside Extortionist, I feel like and a scholar, like I feel like I have ways to generate a decent amount of mana. So cycling through to find something good to play would be nice. Like I wouldn't mind if I got to discard the scrap work mutt. Alright. Hitting for two with Lion Sash. Totally acceptable. I assume that's the only play you've got. Oh, we could have Emery. Hmm, luckily he didn't. All right. Here comes Malcolm. Oh, gut. Hold on, hold on. Land. Dockside Extortionist. All right, this looks pretty good. I could get balanced or something here, but if that's the case, that's the case. Because now I get to go gut off a of treasure. And then, and then I get to send with Malcolm and sack the Dockside Extortionist. Okay, this is pretty sick. <laughs> Not gonna lie. All right, let's sack the Extortionist. Slam for six. I wish if I had one more mana, I could have uh, left up Memory Lapse. Though I'm not sure how likely that's going to be needed. And pass the turn. Draw. I think I'll discard a land over a Scrapwork Mutt, even though the Scrapwork Mutt obviously is pretty good to discard, but land number five that comes in tapped doesn't seem all that necessary. All right. Balance doesn't do it because Lion Sash lets me keep gut. Council's Judgment doesn't do it. Uh, Tinker probably doesn't do it. Well, Tinker Citadel could do it. But if he had Tinker, I think he would have cast it last turn. So we'll have, we'll have to see here. Okay, Ranger Captain of Youth, the one I passed almost last. <laughs> Funny. What is the what is the one drop you're gonna get? Oh, no one drop. Okay. Well, this looks. Whenever Gut gets to make a second skeleton, the game typically just ends. Oh, Soul Ring is actually nice. Let's just go with Soul Ring. A scrapwork mutt. Discard the scholar here. All right. Um, I'll sack the Sunbait Canyon to draw a card. There, there's just cards I could play. Well, that I needed to draw a few, a few turn uh, phases earlier. And so 14. I don't think I attack with gut. I do think I sack the scrap work mutt though. All right. Can double block and take 10 and take six down to eight. And I think I just kill the Lion Sash. I'd rather do that. Though I guess for balance, though I, I care less about balance now that I have a memory lapse up. <laughs> Ranger Captain. Oh, I guess. No, I should have killed the Ranger Captain, actually. That would have been better. All right. I'll draw and discard. Maybe I'll draw a Mind Collapse. Teferi. Uh, I think I still want Rampaging Raptor over Teferi. No, I should, have, I should have killed the Ranger Captain. I wanted to kill the Artifact because of Tinker, but he's already got a Cursed Scroll, and now he can Ranger Captain and then balance me. I think I'll be fine still, but there's just no reason to open the door there. Yeah, he's going to upkeep Ranger Captain. And then Mystical Tutor. Okay. I'm not sure what you're tutoring for. I guess balance? Sure. Yeah, all right. I should win this pretty easily. I, I should have killed the other one, but balance definitely. So sacrifice all creatures you control, and then we're even on everything else. But that also cost max three cards here, and then I get to go... Oh, 
I don't think I need to play the Case of Chaos Adventure. Though actually, I guess I could play both. Let's just play both. Who are we kidding here? No real reason to, to mess around, I think. Mountain, land, raptor. And then now it's like, yeah, you could have another sweeper maybe, but I think having both in play makes it pretty hard to imagine coming back here. I also even have the uh, scrapwork mutt ready to roll next turn. So yeah, I kind of walked into the balance setup for no reason, but I think we're going to be okay despite that. And boom, that's a 2-1. Let's check in on the team. All right, we've got a super sick game to jump in on. So my teammate's Talisker, who's currently 0-1 against the tank, who's 0-2, and we're up 4-2. If we win this game, this is game three, we win the draft. We just made the play of end of turn Brazen Borrower, play equip Jite, kill the reflection token, move Jite to Tough Cookie, and just cross our fingers. Because if the tank has any way to kill a creature, then, you know, that's it. Because there's a Hellrider and two other creatures in play. But without it, the Jite is actually poised to take over this game. Yep, we take three off the Hellrider, block the Goblin Shaman, go down to five, get two counters on Jite, and then Brazen Borrower can equip and attack. And yeah, let's block the Goblin. Okay, so far so good. This puts us to five with now two counters on Ubazawa's Jite and no Bonehorn Dracosaur, please. Starnheim Unleashed, make an angel token. Okay. Okay, okay. So that's pretty close. So what is the play now? I guess you definitely have to attack with Brazen Borrower here with a Jite on it. Okay, here comes Sentinel. And that hit Undermountain Adventure. Okay, that's probably a pretty decent card. Equip Jite on the Brazen Borrower. Just past the turn, I guess. All right, equipped on Brazen. And I think just don't attack here because attacking opens the door for the Angel to hit back. Feels like just leaving the borrower back is fine. And once again, we got to fade one more turn. We've got Undermount Adventure on top. And next turn with the Vigilance on the Sentinel, it's going to be clearly enough. So let's go. Let's go. Don't don't tap your mana. Don't do anything. Just play a creature. Well, I would buy in for you drawing a random creature. Not a not a Bonehorn Dracosaur, but a little worse than that. <laughs> let's see. So... The tank now has to decide. Can attack with everything. Talisker would drop to two off Hellrider triggers, but then goes Brazen Borrower on Angel. Sentinel and Hellrider just pass. Gain two life. Gain another two life. So yeah, still not dead to uh, this attack. And needs actually something kind of good here. A removal spell does do it, I think. Let's say you kill the Brazen Borrower. Attack with everything, block, take six, nine. Yeah, a removal spell does it, exactly. So I guess we just hope that they don't have that. Oh, that's a land. Land isn't good. Land is not good for Boros. Nope, no attacks. Oh, now we're feeling great. So we untap, we draw Undermount Adventure. Can move the Jite to Sentinel. Slam with the Sentinel just to start out with. Make a map token. You can block, but like with a GTA, G, I mean, this is where Ubazawa's GTA shines. This is why it's still in the cube. In creature versus creature combat, the card is ridiculous. You get to pump your own creatures, gain life, give creatures minus one, minus one. Like everything you do is just so obscenely good that uh, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to beat GTA in a creature battle. Now, when you play against a uh, Non-creature decks, it's not the best, which is why we didn't have Talisker main deck the GTA, but this is the matchup for it. And currently it's connected three times, and those three times have gone a long way here. Alright, cracked map, hit island, say go. And this is basically the tank's last hurrah. At this point, even a Bonehorde Draxor wouldn't do the trick. 
I don't think a removal spell does it either. You kill the Hell Rider before any attacks is probably going to be the play. Ooh, we drew something, though. All right, what do you got, Tank? Do you got something that can uh, threaten our GTA? Arden Bale Fealty. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Because casting uh, Virtue of Loyalty is, is reasonably strong here. It's distributing a bunch of plus one, plus one counters. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Now I think we're probably going to want to kill something end of turn is my guess. I assume there's no attacks here. Attacks just seem disastrous. Hmm. Though actually the way it works out, I think, I think we don't actually kill anything end of turn because next turn, go to the forge. Put two counters on Brazen Borrower. It's a 6-4. Move GTA onto Brazen Borrower. Attack with Brazen Borrower, and it threatens 14 points of damage, so the Angel has to block it. You pump with GTA once, and then uh, your Borrower survives, and you have now five counters on Umazawa's GTA, which means you can uh, move it around, put it on one of these things, and then maybe still kill Hellrider. Like it, it all feels pretty good here. And then you can attack with the Vigilance creatures too, most likely, because GTA will play Havoc on on blocks. Yeah, I mean, this Virtual Loyalty was an interesting draw. That was actually one of the like more powerful draws that uh, the tank could have that doesn't also just win the game immediately. You know, Bonehorde Dracosaur would have been kind of interesting, but I guess the Umazawa's GTA would have... Well, it's kind of hard to get counters on it through the GTA, so... Okay, I don't think the attacks look particularly good here for the tank, because if you attack, it's like Brazen just trades for Angel, these things get eaten, and when you have a Virtue of Loyalty in play, you kind of want your board to be as big as possible. And, uh, you know, you get that, that many plus one, plus one counters. So my, my guess is that there's a pass here. All right, and it looks like end of turn, Virtue, Virtue goes... Untap. We're in the Undercity. We're going to go to the Forge, put the counters on Brazen Borrower. Yeah, I like that. Also, Talisker could draw a, a bit of action here. It is also possible that that happens. Waterlog Grove. Yeah, might as well crack it. Maybe you get a Haster or something. Okay. All right. GTA on there. And. Yeah, I like the attack. These things have Vigilance. And the Brazen Borrower is lethal, so the Angel has to block it, which means you don't have to use all the Angel token or the tokens on that, which means that the Hell Rider or any of the Knights that try to block these 3-4s, the, the GTA is going to mess them up too. Also get a map token out of the deal, which is kind of nice. So let's see. And if that's... Again, with the Virtue out, you kind of don't want to make too many blocks, but... It's tough because there's also an Umazawa's GTA in play, and like that's getting a bunch of counters every turn. All right, so hitting for six. Let's see. I think plus plus two plus two once looks good. Well, all right, two more counters on Umazawa's GTA, and it even pumps until end of turn, so you can move the equipment and you don't lose uh, <laughs> you don't lose value. All right, revealed a forest. Map token doing a good job making sure you don't uh, draw too many lands, though. Hit a, hit a little string, but it doesn't matter too much because we've got Umazawa's GTO with five counters on it now. Can kill Hellrider if we need to. And the Brazen Borrower is just lethal next turn, so we kind of just have to survive through this turn. And Brazen Borrower will get the job done. Well, there's also a trap coming. So yeah, this is lethal in a lot of different ways, and we're gaining a million life here. Mm. So, this looks pretty good to me. Sentinel of the Nameless City. Doing the work. This card has been pretty nice. And uh, I'm pretty stoked because uh, the Austrians challenged us. And once again, we got them. That's game. That's match. That's draft. And uh, another dub. Racking them up with a pretty nice Jeskai Soul Ring deck. Mostly just like gut and Caves of Chaos Adventure, Aragorn, with some counter spells, Memory Lapse, Mana Leak, No More Lies. 
low drop red creatures in a couple Teferis. Why not? Plus, I uh, had some decent lands, had the right Triome, had a Mana Confluence, Sunbake Canyon, uh, a bad Triome, and then an Eagles, plus a Spire Bluff. So yeah, this, this worked out pretty nicely, and I'm really glad to take it down. Big sweat there. All right, well, that'll do it for today. I hope you got your daily dose of excitement. As always, I thank you for watching and uh, accompanying me here on these uh, cube adventures. They've been a lot of fun, and I don't anticipate stopping. So on that note, I'll be here tomorrow, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.